Let's get your Bibles in your hand. Let's have our confession. Say, this is my Bible. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I can be who it says I can be. My mind's alert. My heart's receptive to receive the uncompromising, the unchanging, the infallible seed of the Word of God. For well, this is God's Word speaking to me, and I'm going to be a doer of the Word and not a hearer only. You may be seated if you can. My goodness. Well, we had a little storm this afternoon. But the sun is shining right now. Hallelujah. Storms come and go. But we stay strong in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited about the message tonight. I'm going to continue talking about potential. And uh, this has been a marvelous series. And, uh, uh, you, you know, potential is what you're able to do or what you're capable to, uh, you have the capability to do, but you haven't done yet. So God created everything with potential. Everything living, God created with potential. He created everything to grow, to exceed in abundance. And that's what he did when he created us. So we have the potential that God has put inside of us. Are you with me this morning? God has put inside of us. And I was going to tell a story a little bit later, but I'm going to tell it now. But... You know, I, I was researching some things, and I don't know why I come across this, but um, Barbara, Barbara Cochran, I think that's her name. Barbara Cochran, she's one of those ladies that come on uh, Shark Tank sometimes. And, uh, and uh, I was reading a little bit about her biography and things, and, uh, you know, she, uh, she was a D student. She struggled. And later they found out she had dyslexia. But anyway, she was a D student. She barely made her way into a small college, St. Augustine or something like that. Uh, and uh, she actually ended up getting a degree, but she barely passed. And she got a degree in teaching. And uh, she almost made it one year her teaching. And she didn't quite make it. Uh, she had, they say, she's close to 20 different jobs in the last couple, next couple of years. But anyway, she borrowed $1,000 to start her own business. And uh, she took that $1,000 and they said she actually created, she started her own real estate company and uh, she only, she started real estate and she ended up, they say the company was worth over $5 billion when she sold it. Now she sold it for $66 million. One source says $66 million, One source says $70 million, which is about 20 some years later. I think it was 22, 23 years later she sold it. And now she's worth over $100 million. And I say that to tell you that your potential is inside God. I mean, God has put potential in you. Don't rely on what other people say you can do. Don't rely on what other people say that you, you can make it or you can't make it. Don't, don't, don't think that you're not smart enough or you're not good enough. You know, that's uh, even when we... Even our young people, you know, they, they give them these SAT scores. They give them these SAT tests later on. And I believe in education. You should get all the education you can get. Uh, I don't believe in, I've said this before, I don't believe in going in debt to go to college. I believe you can pay for it as you go along. And I've talked about that. So I'm not on uh, different ways you can do that. But uh, you should get all the education you can get. But the education is not your source. Barbara got a degree in teaching. Her degree was in teaching, and she didn't, she taught maybe one, they said she almost made it one year, I think it was. But she started her own company. There was more in her than what the schooling could give her. So don't, and, 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 and let me just say this. A lot of times when you take them SAT tests, some people do very well on them. Some people don't do good on them. And don't let that dictate your life. Don't let how good you do on a test dictate what you can and cannot be. Because they put, a, they put a, well, he just, he's just average or he's a little below average. And they'll carry that thought with them. They'll carry that thinking with them throughout their life. And that's wrong. You don't get your value from a test. You get your value from the one who created you. 
So we have been talking about potential, and potential is, you know, is what you're able to do that you haven't done yet. And you've done some probably good things, but there's more in you than you realize. Are you with me this morning? So, you know, we talked about God created the heavens and the earth. He created everything. And when he, and he also, when he wanted plants, what did he do? He spoke to the dirt. Pay attention now. When he wanted, when he wanted animals, he spoke to the ground. When he wanted sea creatures and fish, he spoke to the waters. So God wanted whatever he wanted, he spoke to the source that he wanted to come out of. So when he wanted us, he spoke to himself. He said, let us make man in our image. So we came directly from God. So in order for us to fulfill our potential, we have to stay connected to the source, the one who created us. The plants have to stay connected to the dirt. The animals have to stay connected to the ground in order to live. They have to feed on the ground. And fish, of course, all the sea creatures have to stay connected to the water in order to survive and live. So we have to stay connected to the Father. So that's where we're going to pick up tonight. Um, I'm going to review just a little bit. Let's go to John 15, verse 7. Hallelujah. John 15, verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. We know abiding means remain in, stay connected to. But if you are abiding in him, then you are being obedient and faithful to his word. Think about that now. If you're abiding in him, that means you're being obedient and faithful to his word. Jesus is connecting abiding to being faithful and obedient. Is he not? Amen. But he's also connecting abiding to your prayers being answered. Then to say, whatever you ask or whatever you desire, it shall be done for you. So he's connecting abiding. He's connecting being faithful to his word. And he's also connecting abiding to being uh, our prayers being answered. Being faithful and obedient, therefore, is a prerequisite to answered prayers. Yeah. Amen. It's not only a prerequisite to answered prayers, it is a prerequisite to maximizing your potential. Prerequisite, listen to this, the definition of prerequisite is a thing that is required as a prior condition for something else to happen. Let me say that again. The definition of prerequisite is a thing that is required as a prior, connect, a prior condition for something else to happen. So we have to be, abide in him and our words have to abide in us. Then we can ask what we desire and it'll be given to us. If you abide in me, if you remain in me, if you stay connected to me, you will ask what you desire. It shall be done for you. That is, a, see, God's word will not come back void. When he said it, it's already established. He doesn't just, he doesn't just sit up there and pick and choose what he's going to answer, what he's not going to answer. He's already decided, he's already determined that if you do this, this will happen. Are y'all with me? What a promise, isn't it something? Yeah. Of course, desire is the definition is to express a hunger for, a deep craving for, a longing for. Do you desire enough? I said uh, last Wednesday, do you, or, yeah, last Wednesday, do you desire enough to come to church on Sundays and Wednesdays? Obviously you do. Do you desire enough to spend time with him? What have you, don't raise your hands. I don't want you to lie in church. What have you done for God today? Think about that. What have you done for God today? Not what he's done for you. What have you done for God today? Have you talked to God? Have you spent time with him? Have you prayed? Getting quiet on me in here. Do you desire enough to get on your knees and pray to the Father? Do you desire enough to be obedient and to, to, and to live a life of faithfulness 
to him. Let's go to John 15, verse 1 and 2. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus is directly talking here, and it says, he says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he proves that it may bear more fruit. So the potential of the branches needs the attention of the vine dresser. Who's the vine dresser? God. Come on, y'all, stay with me now. The vine dresser is God, which he's the gardener according to these scriptures. And the gardener works in the vineyard trying to bring as much life as possible out of the vines. Amen. Often he prunes the vines because he knows that there's more life down in the roots when he gets rid of the dead stuff. He gets rid of the stuff that's hindering the vine from producing more fruit. Since he sees that he's not getting the full capacity of the vine, he begins to clip some of the branches, cutting off the old stuff, the old leaves that, don't, that stop the vine from producing its full potential. In John 51, we see that God is described as the gardener. Just like the gardener in the vineyard, the Father comes into our life, if we allow him to, and to, he clips away those bad habits. He clips away those bad attitudes. In every weight, he clips away every weight and every sin that causes us that, or that hinders us from producing our full potential. Are you with me tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. So we see that every weight and every sin that we go through is a hindrance to us fulfilling the calling that God has for us. Amen? He knows if you're not living up to your potential, he knows if you're not measuring up to the source from which you came, he prunes your life through discipline and he wants us to be obedient to him and God is the one that desires our potential to be maximized. Amen. It's God that wants us to fulfill the potential he's placed in us. Think of it like this. All the word, all the scriptures, all the laws, all the commandments are, in, are given to us to maximize our potential. Amen. The Bible, think about this. The Bible is not given to us for us to be born again. How many people read their Bible consistently before they become born again? It's not for us to become born again. It's for us to realize that we can maximize the potential that God has placed in us. I'm, I don't know about you, but that, that makes me excited. There's more to you than you realize. There's more to you than you realize. You've got to take the, 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 the cap off the potential. You got to keep the stuff from clogging up. Everybody say, I'm going to take the cap off. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Jesus says, Abide in me and you will be fruitful. Remain in me. Stay connected to me. But he also says that you cannot do it on your own. Just like no branch can live by itself, it must remain attached to the vine. You are a branch. If you remain in Christ and Christ remains in you, you will bear abundant fruit. No branch can bear any fruit if it is not attached. No matter how talented or gifted you are, you will never be satisfied or maximize your potential if you're staying apart or you're not connected to your source. Stay connected to your source. God has chosen us to bear fruit. Refuse to live below your potential. You, you got it, did you hear me this morning? I mean tonight. Refuse to live below your potential. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I like this, says in verse 9, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. We know that but indicates a change. So I want to go back to verse 6 and 8 to see what it's talking about. Oh, I guess I need to turn there. I don't have that written in my notes. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 and 8. Hallelujah. I love diving into the word. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 and 8. See, a lot of people misunderstand, eye has not seen, ears have heard, the heart of man, the things which God has prepared. A lot of times people think that's talking about heaven. Even though that could, it could be heaven because heaven's a great thing. We can't even imagine what heaven's going to be like. Let's look and see what he's actually talking about. Verse 6 says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, which is talking about the worldly wisdom, who are coming to nothing. But verse 7 says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory. God put wisdom in you before you was even here. When you were just being created. God knew what you were going to be. He put the seed in you. God, that's exciting right there. He put the seed in you. And verse 8 says, Which came of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have if they had known, they wouldn't have crucified him. Because they, they, wouldn't, they, they, they didn't know that when he crucified him, that the enemy is defeated. The devil's been defeated when he crucified him. Are you with me? The enemy has been defeated. In, in the Matthew Henry commentary, this is another, you probably know, it's a translation that breaks down scripture. It says this, and I can prove it, it's not talking about heaven. It says, the spiritual wisdom of God is both employed and displayed for the honor of of the saints, which is you and I, from eternity and displayed in time to make them, which is you and I, glorious both here on this earth and hereafter. Understand what this is talking about now. It's talking about spiritual wisdom, the hidden secret wisdom of God. The glorious here in this scripture means vast wealth of wisdom. Are you getting that? To make them, you and I, vast wealth of wisdom, both here on this earth and in heaven. I like what it says. Employ means to occupy the time. Employ means to have attention and labor of and to keep busy or at work. That means we can employ the Holy Spirit to reveal what God has put inside of us. Are y'all with me? Yeah. See, when you employ, we don't mind employing natural things, and when we employ natural things, we know we, if you employ concrete for footing, I used to uh, be in construction, so I know a little bit about footings and foundations, but you employ concrete for footings, you employ block and brick for the foundation, you employ wood for the structure, you employ shingles to put on the houses, the things you employ when you're producing something in the natural. Well, what this scripture is talking about is we need to employ, put the Holy Spirit to work for us. Are you with me? Amen. We need to employ the Holy Spirit to give us the hidden secret spiritual wisdom that God has placed inside of us. Amen. I'm going to read this out in the Amplified, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But on the contrary, as the scripture says... What eye has not seen and ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man, all that, everybody say all that. All that, all that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready. Keeps ready is present tense. Yeah. Keeps ready for those who love him. Listen to this. This is our responsibility. This is the prerequisite here. Who hold him in affectionate reverence who promptly obeys him and gratefully recognize the benefits he has bestowed to us. 
This is not referring to the wonders of heaven. This is referring to the wisdom and potential which God has already prepared for us. Your eyes can't see. Your ears can't hear. Nor can you even comprehend the things that God has prepared for us. You cannot comprehend it in your natural mind. I'm just, I'm just giving you the word. I'm just a messenger. The only way to get a revelation of all these things is to stay connected to your source, which is God, and is revealed to us through his divine agent, which is what? The Holy Spirit. Let's go to verse 10. Hallelujah. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For it's the spirit who searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Everybody is born of spirit. Everybody is a spirit. They have a soul and they live in a body. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit who is from God. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us. Are y'all getting this? Amen. The things, verse 13, the things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. This is what we have to cling to, folks. The Holy Spirit is actively involved in helping us discern who we are and what we're capable of. We cannot discern the things with the natural mind because the natural mind or the unbeliever does not and cannot receive or even comprehend the things of the Holy Spirit. The good news is that we can know them. The good news is that we are born again. We have received Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we stay connected to God. Then that Holy Spirit starts to reveal things to us. Amen. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I'm going somewhere. Y'all want to go with me? All right. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 says, I say then walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish in the natural, or you wish in the flesh. Every believer has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit as a personal power for living. Why? To please God. That's what we're here for. We're here as a born-again Christian to please the Father. The form of the Greek verb translated walk indicates uh, a continuous action or a habitual lifestyle. When we as believers submit to the Holy Spirit or submit to his control, which means responding in obedience to his commands and being faithful to the scriptures, we will always grow spiritually when we do that. We will always grow spiritually when we are faithful to his word and obedient to his word. As you grow spiritually, you're on your way to maximizing your potential and fulfilling your purpose. Spiritual growth is a lifelong process that depends on the wisdom and knowledge that you gain individually through meditating, studying, coming to church, reading, and applying, most importantly, his word in your life. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. This is one of the main scriptures we've been dialed in in this series on potential. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power 
has given to us all things. Everybody say all things. That pertain to life and godliness. Through how? Through the knowledge of him. Who's responsible getting the knowledge of him? We are. Who called us by glory and virtue. Now I like it in the Passion Translation because it kind of breaks it down. It says in the Passion Translation, same scripture, everything we could ever need for life and godliness are already deposited in us by his divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name, God knows your name, and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. Knowing God is the key to accessing your potential, to accessing and maximizing your potential. Like I said before, don't let society... Don't let culture, don't let government or other people set the standard for how you can live. The Holy Spirit is the key that allows all the power within you to come to life. Without the Holy Spirit, you will never function to your fullest potential. It won't happen. Stay connected to the source. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God sent back that wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, which was the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. We say it all the time. I know that's planted in your mind. But knowing it and understanding what that really means is a little bit different. We are all spirit beings. Everybody agree with that? Amen. We're all spirit beings. We are spirit. We have a soul. We live in a body. This is true even before you were saved. You were still a spirit you have a soul and you live in a body. Are you with me? And function by that spirit of man. Let me say it again. Let me say it this way. Before you were saved, you still are a spirit. And you live and function by that spirit of man. The spirit of man can only produce and manufacture the things of man. This is why you can't fulfill your potential by staying connected to yourself. Where in the world does it say in the Bible, think about yourself more than you think about everybody else? It doesn't have. It says the opposite, don't you? It says honor other people. Think of others. Put others first before yourself. That's, what, that's not what man's spirit does or wants to do. But when you become born again, the Holy Spirit moves in on the inside of us and connects with our spirit or connects with the spirit of man. Then we become spiritually alive, not by man's spirit, but by the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit starts teaching our spirit who we're supposed to be. You will never know where you are supposed to be until you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and receive God's gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit comes into our lives and he starts clipping. He starts chipping, clipping, pruning the things out of our lives that are holding us back, that are clogging us up, that are dragging us down. King Solomon says this in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 4, in the Amplified, he says, The words of a discreet and wise man's mouth are like deep waters, plenteous and difficult to fathom. And the fountain of a skillful and godly wisdom is like a gushing stream, sparkling, fresh, pure, and life-giving. That's what I want them to stay connected to. I want to stay connected to that stream that's full of life. Life in abundance. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God comes to bring life and to bring it more abundantly. And we're teaching you how to get more abundantly in you. 
Because the abundant one lives on the inside of you. The more we learn about the wisdom and knowledge of God and we start yielding to the Holy Spirit, that's the key, yield to the Holy Spirit. Now, you can't yield to something that you don't know nothing about. You can't yield to the Holy Spirit if you're not staying connected to the Father. You're not going to pay him no mind no way. Are you with me? But we have to start yielding to the Holy Spirit. We begin, when we do that, we begin to know who we are in Christ. The more we know about who we are and what we're capable of, our attitude starts to change. Remember now, the Holy Spirit come in and connect with our spirit, and he starts pruning things, clipping things, changing things. And then you start to, then your attitude starts changing. Wait a minute, I'm a child of God. I'm a kingdom citizen. I'm created in the image of God. I'm a prosperous person. I'm blessed coming and I'm blessed going. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Your attitude starts changing. You start to believe I am what God says I am. You start to believe I can do what God says I can do. You start to believe I can have what God says I can have. Then you start to believe you can walk by faith and not by sight. Come on. Come on. My goodness, are y'all getting this? Yeah. Let me read this again. I'm going to read it all at one time. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians, I'm going to read chapter 2, verse 6 through 14. I'm going to read it a little slow, but just meditate on it because we just went over it. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. That's you and I. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. I'm talking about the wisdom of the world, who's coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, everybody say but. As it is written. I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things, the potential which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. The spirit searches the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him. We all have a spirit. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. The Spirit of man cannot know the things of the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, or not the Spirit of this age, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Wow! Freely given to us. We don't have to pay for it. It's been freely given to us if we are obedient and faithful to his word. These things we speak not in words of which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things to spiritual. Verse 14 says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God because they're foolish to him, nor can he even know them because they are spiritually discerned. Your potential that you have on the inside of you is spiritually discerned. That means you can only discern it through the Holy Spirit. Are y'all getting that? Amen. There are things about you concerning who you can be you haven't even discovered yet. Uh, y'all heard me say this more than once. I, I got this from T.D. Jace. Where you're at right now is not your destination. But where you're at right now is your transportation to your destination. And it, and, it, and it makes a difference how you handle your transportation right now, what kind of attitude you have. Are you with me? That wasn't even in my notes. I just had to. There are things about you that you don't even know or haven't discovered. God reveals his deep things to you through the Holy Spirit. 
He knows you wouldn't believe him if they were told to you through the eyes, ears, and the heart. The deepest things you can know about yourself only come through the Holy Spirit. The potential, listen to me, the potential of a thing is determined by the demands placed upon it by the Creator. I'm going to say that again. The potential of a thing is determined by the demands placed upon it by the Creator. Whenever God demands or commands something of you, don't ask whether you can do it or not. See, a lot of people want to negotiate. They, they, they want to compromise is another good word. That's, that's really good this day and time. It just, it, just, it just irks me, if that is a word, that religions, even Catholics, are starting to compromise what the Bible says to please people. Oh, man, I thought about this. I'm looking for a word. I'm looking for a word. Um, the Bible was not written to accommodate people. Are you with me? The Bible was written to change people. To change people. The Bible was written for people to live by. It, it, it wasn't, the Bible wasn't written to be changed. It wasn't written to accommodate people's lifestyle. People's lifestyle need to accommodate what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So whenever God commands something of you, don't ask whether you can do it or not or whether it can be done or not. When the Word says that you can do anything if you truly believe, don't argue or doubt that you can. Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The Holy Spirit strengthens you. When the Word says that you can do anything, if you truly believe it, don't argue with it. God knows that whatever your heart's desire and whatever you believe strong enough and commit to can come out of you because he put it in you. Your potential is determined by the demands of your Creator. When you, buy, uh, when you buy an appliance, a manual comes with it. Don't a manual come with it when you buy something new, a new appliance? And it says, read this before you hook it up. <laughs> now, us men, <laughs> I'm guilty. I don't like to read this before I hook it up. I might glance at a few pictures. <laughs> don't say nothing. But that's why we have parts left over. <laughs> Read this before you hook it up. It also says that you have purchased a TV that can do X, Y, and Z. It'll tell you everything that that television is capable of doing. You may never have seen a TV do that before. But the manual says that it can. Why? Because the manufacturer made it possible for it to do that. If there's any defect, you call this number or you can return it to the manufacturer because the manufacturer is guaranteeing the potential of the thing. If you're having trouble fulfilling your potential, the manufacturer says, come unto me. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. God can fix you. God has already guaranteed what you can do. So if you're not doing it, if you're not functioning the way God says you can function, then you're malfunctioning. So find out what it is that you're malfunctioning in. He has built in you to produce everything he calls for. Uh-oh. Everybody say, uh-oh. Uh -oh. When God says love your enemies, don't start listening reasons why you can't. 
Se va a hacer algo. Matthew 5, 44, Jesus says, But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. The ability to love your enemies. The ability to do good to those who hate you. The ability to pray for those who spitefully use you is built into you. He wired you to produce everything that he commands. It's not that you can't do it. It's that you won't do it. You have the ability to do it because he put the ability in you because he created you to do it. So if you're not doing it, you're malfunctioning. You're not staying connected to the source. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, oh. Whenever God gives you responsibility, he also gives you the ability to meet the responsibility. That means whatever God calls for is already provided for. Whatever God calls for is already provided for. So whatever his word says we can do, it's already done. His word will not come back void. Are y'all getting any of this? Yeah. Hallelujah. Good. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Whatever God calls for, it is already provided for. So don't set a limit to what you can do. Because anyone who sets a limit to what they can do sets a limit to what he will do. Let me say it again. Anyone who sets a limit on what they can do set, is setting a limit on what they will do. And don't let people dictate what you can and what you cannot do. Man, especially our young folks. Oh, my goodness. Sweetheart, what's your name? Gianni? Gianni? Janiah. God's got something big in you. You're created in the image of God. Don't let Facebook, don't let people at school dictate what you can and cannot do. Don't even act, don't even consider doing something because somebody else is doing it. You find out what the Word says, and the Word will tell you what you can do, what you can't do. Don't put a limit on it. There's no limit to what you can do. There's no limit to what any of us can do. When we get a hold of this, I'm telling you, we're going to start changing some things. My goodness, hallelujah. So there's nothing in this world that should stop you from accomplishing, realizing, fulfilling, and maximizing your full potential. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. It's a good place to stop right there. Proverbs 3, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you can think it, you can conceive it. If you conceive it, you can, can, you can do it. But can start conceiving. You, now, what, don't take your thoughts based on what man says. Start thinking and meditating on what God says you can do. And stay connected to your source.